This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Oh, looks like they cleaned up their attic access from last time. It's definitely not as dirty. Um, today, we are here for an air balance issue, which I kind of knew was coming. Wow, that was a blast of air. So, this is the location where I had the dishwasher exhaust that wasn't working right. And um, I knew that there was like an air balance problem here. And yeah, finally really, they realized what it was and realized how bad it was. So they want me to address the air balance. So what's happening, if you guys can picture the air balance, we have exhaust fans that are pulling the unwanted air out of the building. When the exhaust fans pull the air out, again, I've showed this before, but think of a paper bag. If you put your mouth on a paper bag and you suck, the bag collapses. But if you cut the perfect size hole in the bottom of the bag, the air goes right through. So the exhaust fans are running. They're pulling the air out of the building, the unwanted smoky air. But we need to put air back into the building called makeup air, okay? We need to make up for what we're exhausting out. So somewhere along the lines, there's a problem with the makeup air because they have an extremely negative air pressure in this building. When I walked up to the building, it was actually worse than when I was here last time. It was very difficult for me to open their door with one hand. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, it was ridiculous. So I need to figure out where the problem is. Now, when we're dealing with restaurants, we have dedicated makeup air units like I'm looking at right now, but we also have minimum outside air dampers on the ACs. So usually through the economizer, we'll pull a minimum outside air or a minimum amount of outside air, okay? Um, for two reasons, to make up for the makeup air, obviously, but then also to bring fresh air into the building because we do have fresh air requirements where we have to bring in so much fresh air per person, that kind of stuff. So typically, we'll pull a little bit of outside air through the ACs, we'll pull a lot of outside air through the makeup air unit, and that's where we gotta start. So to start this, I need to figure out why our building is so negative, meaning that the air pressure in the building is pulling a negative pressure. And when you open the door, the outside air rushes in the building. But I gotta figure out why it's so negative. So um, again, I'm not a certified air balance technician. I'm just gonna kinda wing this and do the best that I can with the tools that I have. So the only tools that I have is a manometer, my hand, and I'm just gonna go investigating, figuring out what's going on. So first and foremost, I'm gonna go get my manometer and we're gonna find a baseline of what the uh, negative air pressure is on the building. And then we'll start addressing where the potential problems might be. So I'm gonna take just a generic measurement right now. And that's the negative air pressure measurement in inches of water column right now. 0.35 inches of water column of negative air pressure on the building. Okay, every once in a while, someone will open, so all the doors are closed to the building right now, so every once in a while, someone will open a door and then that pressure will go way down, but they have to struggle. Now what I'll do is I'll open the roof hatch real quick, because I have the roof hatch closed. And you can see that number drop very, very low. Okay, so let's go ahead and close it down. And there we go. So point three, five inches of water column of negative air pressure on the building. You can see that someone must have just opened the front door because, and now they just shut it. It's crazy. All right, so what I need to do is first off, assuming all the exhaust fans are probably running fine, but I'm gonna go around and check to make sure all of our exhaust fans are running. If they aren't, we need to make sure we get them running. Let's see, they still have to fix the grease. So, just testing all the exhaust fans. That exhaust fan over there is not working. This dish fan, yes. Yes, okay, exhaust fans are all working. All right, so here in Southern California, typically what's very common on the restaurants is that we take our uh, indoor blower motors on the air conditioning units, or the RTU units, and they run 24 seven when the building's occupied. So our next step is, is to make sure that every blower is running on every AC and that all the belts are good. Same thing on the makeup air. And then we're gonna check and make sure all the blowers are running on these guys and make sure the um, outside air filters are clean. We're just gonna go through and start checking everything. Now if you look over here, this, this uh, AC unit 
is missing the outside air filter because it's laying on the ground. And we can take that opportunity to come up. See, this unit doesn't sound like it's running. So, maybe it is. Yeah, it's running. It's running. I can feel air. But we're just going to go around checking every AC to make sure that, and the makeup air unit, to make sure that the belts are good, the outside air filters are clean, and the indoor blower motors are all running. We can't leave, when we're dealing with this restaurant, the way that it's set up, we can't leave the, the fan on the thermostat set to auto. The fan has to be in the on mode because we need that fan to run the entire time the building is occupied. So basically what we normally do is anytime the exhaust fans are turned on, um, if it's a building that I've set up or I've rewired them uh, many times before, this one I haven't done, but I'll have a interlock switch. So if the hood fan, the hoods turn on, then it automatically puts every AC into occupied mode and turns the fans on, ignoring what the thermostat says. That's, that's the way that I usually do it. Now, I realize that in some other parts of the country, you guys can't do that because of humidity problems. But here in California, Southern California especially, we don't know what humidity is, so we're oftentimes just pulling a minimum outside air that's not conditioned, you know, no special s stuff on it from the outside air and so that's why we have to have the fans running. So I'm gonna jump around and start looking at everything and I'll bring you guys in if I find anything strange. Well, I can already tell you that the kitchen AC's indoor blower motor is not running and look at these filters. Uh, NorCal Dave would say plug o bug -o. That's looking into the sunlight. Filters are plugged. So I imagine all the AC's are gonna be this way but we're gonna figure out why this indoor blower motor is not running too. Again, we're just gonna start with one AC and work our way through. The negative air pressure is so strong that without the indoor blower motor running, um, it's moving the blower. First I thought it was running, but it's not. The unit has no power. It's also got a loose belt. That's not good. But um, if we come on over here, the unit has no power on the uh, Jade controller. Come on over to the disconnect switch. We've got no power on the disconnect switch, so I gotta go downstairs and figure out where the main power switch is. Uh, it should be a breaker. So we turn the disconnect off, we don't leave it on, we'll go downstairs, find the breaker, turn it on, whether it's tripped or not, then we'll come up and diagnose. I love it when we use the room for storage. All right, so um, AC6. It's not tripped, it's just off. Yeah, it wasn't tripped. Hold on. Right, yeah, no, it wasn't tripped, so, because I didn't have to turn it off. So, they might have just rubbed up against it with their crap. I don't know. We'll have to go check it out, but yeah, I don't think it was tripped, so. Okay, so we've got voltage now. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check for anything, uh, any direct shorts to ground before I power this back on. Because the breaker was not tripped, but you know, who knows, maybe someone shut it off. We gotta be careful. We don't wanna just flip things on. So I'll check everything to ground to see if we have any shorts. First and foremost, what I'm gonna do, I have one leg on the ground and we're gonna check from the bottom of each fuse to ground to see nothing, nothing. Nothing, and we'll just confirm. Now we have a ground, or a direct short, because I'm touching the cabinet metal. So nothing from the fuses to, you know, the this side of the contactors is grounded, so we'll go check all the contactors now. Okay, and again, we're just being careful, so disconnect switch is still off. We're gonna go ahead and just start checking terminals to ground, just to show you. There we go. We've got potential to ground now but that's because I'm touching the cabinet and this guy's grounded right here. So we're just testing all the terminals. Check the other side for giggles, just to be safe. Nothing is uh, showing direct short to ground, so I feel pretty safe turning this unit back on now, so we're gonna flip it on. I'm gonna stand back, fire it up. Like my uh, indoor blower's turning on. We're gonna have to tighten up that belt, but I just wanna see the unit operations to make sure nothing scary happens. I don't suggest ever pushing in contactors unless you know what you're doing. 
compressor, compressor, condenser fan motor. So nothing scares me. Everything seems to operate. So what I'm gonna do is power this unit down and we're gonna tighten up that belt and then we'll uh, go ahead and put the unit back together and watch it operate. Remember, I can't stress this enough. We need to tighten up this belt. This is not running, by the way. This is just barely moving. I just, it's just the air balance that's moving it, so don't freak out that I'm sticking my hand in there. Um, we need to tighten this belt up. We don't adjust the pulley or the sheave. You leave that alone. That is your airflow adjustment. Think of this as airflow adjustment. We adjust the adjustment rods, but in order to do that, we have to loosen these bolts. All these bolts, there's four of them. Two on the other side too, you loosen those, and then you use this to tighten it up, and we're gonna put proper tension on this belt. So we still have some adjustments, but the fan is now running. The outdoor air damper is opening. If we go to status, we're scrolling through this guy right now. This is the Honeywell Jade controller. This makes the economizer so easy. Um, mixed air temperature set, or mixed air temp right now is 68. Outdoor air temp is 71. Uh, the damper's open 31%. Mechanical cool. Fan speed is on low right now. So we need to check everything out. So let's come on over here and see what Let's see what we're at. Again, we gotta be careful because the building, you know, they're opening and closing doors. But it looks like we dropped about down to 0.30 inches of water column. We were at 0.36. So we dropped a little bit, but we're still gonna have some problems. But I have a feeling that we're gonna have plugged up air filters in all the ACs. So I'm gonna go pull the air filters out and see what kind of a difference we make. I went ahead and walked around and pulled all the air filters out of the unit. They were all dirty, but it really didn't make much of a difference. And I can tell you why. As I'm pulling the air filters out, I'm noticing that there's several ACs that the indoor blower motors aren't running on. And then another thing too, is that uh, I walked over to this makeup air unit and the filters are plugged solid. Look in here and see if we can see. Plugged solid. So I'm gonna pull those filters out too and then uh, we'll jump on the ACs and see which ones weren't working. That one in the corner wasn't working and I think that one might not have been working either. So we'll see. Again, I'm talking about the indoor fans, so. These filters are plugged, but they're also jacked up and there's several of them that are like really thin and deteriorated. So we're gonna go ahead and get them all new filters and I'm gonna leave the filters out for now. Let's go ahead and walk over here and see what our uh, air pressure reading is now. It's like baby steps, little things at a time. So we're getting there. This is the makeup air unit. And uh, I don't think that is tight enough. It's just gonna be a bunch of preventative maintenance stuff here. They should have been doing. So I'm gonna get this tightened up and then we'll just keep moving. Probably gonna have to talk to him about replacing this motor because the bearings are going out. Um, I can't get it when I tighten it up to where it should be tension wise. I get a ticking sound coming out of the bearings. But this is this will do. This is better than it was. Both of these pulleys too. This one is uh, kind of worn out and this one is too. So we'll talk to him about replacing those at the same time. All right, make a bear is uh, tight and back on. So it's, you know, just baby steps. We're just going through everything trying to figure out why they're not working. So I also zeroed out my uh, manometer for some reason it was getting a false reading I was seeing a difference so but anyways yeah we're looking uh, we're getting there so we typically want the building to be slightly positive so another thing is is a lot of these units we just took the store over but a lot of these units the economizers are disconnected so we probably need to manually open up the outside air dampers to get some minimum outside air flowing through this without going over and start playing with the makeup air unit. I still got to finish going through the ACs. I just got done checking that belt. What I'm finding is, is that several economizers are disconnected like I thought. And um, you can see they have the jumper in place on this one. Don't know what's wrong with them, but I'm sure the linkages are all bad and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually balance the building again. I am not a certified air balance person. I'm just going to do the best with what I have. So what I'm doing is uh, loosening up the the actuator motor so that way I can spin it freely 
you see how I can move it now, right? And I'm just gonna kind of set each unit to about, I don't know, 15% or something like that outside air. And then we'll see where that gets us once I make my way around the building. I'm, I'm choosing certain units, the bigger units that can handle a little bit more load than the smaller units first. And we'll try to balance it out. Again, this is just winging it because all these economizers I'm assuming are disconnected. So I just found this unit just sitting here. Motor's not hot. Unit has power. We gotta figure out why the blower motor's not running. I would think it would be running right now, but we also need to put a belt on it, so. Well, this pulley, I've got the unit shut off by the way, but this motor pulley is bad. And what you can do, first off, you can look at the belt. Look at how the belt is like shredded in a weird way. It's got a weird shape to it. But if I take, I have a belt that's too big, but I put it on here. Watch, let me, let me slow this guy down real quick. It's just the negative air pressure doing that. Okay, so we put this guy on and put this guy on. And what we do is we pull this tight like this. And look at how the belt gets stuck. It's because the inside of this pulley is worn down to where it's got a groove worn into it. So watch, I'm gonna squeeze it. And you notice how the belt doesn't, look at the belt. Even if I disconnect it completely, look at it. It's because it's stuck in there. And that'll cause, and see, look at it. I'm peeling right now. It's really jammed inside there. This is my old pulley or sheave from the, uh, the video. And this is a perfectly good pulley or sheave. So if you look at the groove, this one's obviously closed all the way, but still just look at the groove, look at the, the shape. Notice how it's just a, a taper. And then look at this one. Look at the, look at the shape. Now we can also take the, um, the alignment right here. And you can see that in no way does it fit. Look at this one. The alignment, actually that's the wrong one. You can take the alignment tool. This is just my browning alignment, I mean, uh, pulley tool. And you can see how it fits in the groove. This is a good groove. Now let's go to this one and look at how nothing in no way does it fit. Now granted, it's open, but still you can see the, the clear. You just push this flat piece right here up against the pulley and you shouldn't have that that gap on the bottom right there again we'll go back over to this one look at how nice and tight that is see how that one fits nice and tight and this one has that big gap in no way does it fit anything so this uh pulley tool is great for testing for worn out sheaves or pulleys, it does a really good job. And then there's also a belt tool too, so you can see if the belt's worn out. Um, it does a really good job. It has some excessively big ones on there too that I would never deal with, but you can use this for all different sizes. And it tells you right on there. That's good for an A belt, B belt, A or B. So there's different, Different sizes. I don't even know about any of these 3Vs, 5Vs. I don't deal with anything like that. C-belt, 8V. I mean, those are way beyond what I deal with. I just deal with A-belts and B-belts. I'm light commercial. So um, you can usually tell. I mean, if a pulley's getting stuck, you know, that's it's time to replace it. But I mean, a belt. But you can, you can see it. You can just clearly see that it doesn't have that even gradual taper. See, I know that one's just nice and even. So that just happens, you know, um, over time. Also, several of their thermostats, the fans are set to, that one's set to on, but a bunch of them are set to auto. That one's blank, that's the one that's down. So I'm going through making sure the time's set and that the thermostats are set to auto for the fan. And we're just kind of going through the list because these, like I said, the fans, the, I'm sorry, the fan needs to be in the on position. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, but putting in new filters is also going to cause a bigger air restriction because remember, I was looking at the balance without any filters at all. So the filters are going to have a little bit of a pressure drop. It may be noticeable in the manometer. It may not. We'll have to see. But if we were finishing today 
if I had that EC fixed, then we would definitely want to dial it in better once we put the filters in. So I'm returning today to finish up this last AC. Um, yeah, to recap, we had a pulley that's bad that's ripping the belts apart and it's in really bad shape. So we're gonna go ahead and replace both pulleys, the belt, get that dialed in. And then also it has a low voltage fuse that's blown. So we're gonna have to figure out why we have a low voltage short, where it's at. Got all my equipment to change everything out. So we're gonna get started on it and see what we can find. So my electrical section right here, this is my, and my main power's turned off and I verified. This is my control fuse right here and this is blown. I was checking this yesterday when I was here. I didn't do anything else other than that. The number one place, not always, but the number one place that we have uh, electrical shorts on the low voltage side on these carrier package units is on this economizer wiring right here, running all the way over. They short out all the time, they rub out. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking the unit apart because I'm gonna change the pulley and the, uh, the drive pulley and the motor pulley anyways. Um, this economizer has been disconnected. I've talked about these before. So this is how it was sitting inside there. So more than likely it's got a bad actuator motor or something. And you can see right here that someone has undone all the wires, but a lot of times we still get the shorts. So to make this easier, I'm just gonna pull this side panel off so that way I can get to everything, inspect the wiring and go from there. Um, on that economizer, I wouldn't replace uh, just the motor, the actuator or something, if I was gonna change that economizer, I'd put in a new Jade system and it comes as a package. And when you do that, I typically don't use the control wiring anyways. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all that wiring, we'll yank it out and then we'll just bypass it at the board. And then if we ever came back in, if the customer wanted us to put a new economizer in here, I would just run a thermostat wire. I've done it a bunch and it's so much easier that way. Um, so anyways, I'm just working on getting the side panel off so I can get the pulley changed and I want to see the actual electrical short if I can. On these economizers, when uh, you know, you've got a, a freeze stat that sometimes will short out, I'll do a really good job inspecting that. But again, I'm disconnecting the economizer because it wasn't hooked up and the wiring constantly shorts out. I don't even know if that's where the problem is, but I'm just eliminating that from the equation. Um, they usually have a bunch of wires over there and all that they're doing is they're taking R and common and powering the economizer module and then they take your cooling stages and you run your cooling stages through the economizer and the logic board in there says hey when you get a call for Y1 or Y2 it says hey it's cool enough outside and it opens the damper instead of opening or turning the mechanical cooling on or sometimes you can set them up that it'll turn on the mechanical cooling after so much time. So when you really break these down, there's really nothing to it. I pulled the wires all the way back, all the way out of the wiring harnesses, all the way out of there. So you've got an R wire right here. You've got a Y1 wire. You've got a Y2 wire and you have a common wire. That's it. That's all that's going to the economizer that's being used on this unit. Now, there's also um, a wire coming back to the compressor lockout boards for each compressor lockout board right here. So that way when you get a cooling call, oh, look at that. And I think we might've found the short too while we were doing it. Cause look, there's a short right there. Interesting, see? And I had a hunch that that was where it was gonna be. It looks like the short might be right there. It might've rubbed up against something. So, um, but anyways, we're still going on this. Now, they also had some extra wires too for extra accessories. Um, they would run wires for a powered exhaust, um, you know, different kind of sensors and different things, but those were just being, you know, not used at all. So all that I'm gonna do is take the call for Y1 and go directly into the compressor lockout board for each compressor. The pressure controls and safeties are all still gonna be in the picture. I'm just gonna go directly into the compressor lockout board from Y1 and Y2, and then it goes through the um, you know, pressure controls and then it goes to the compressor contactors. Most uh, air conditioning manufacturers have uh, great information on their electrical schematics and they have a really good legend on their schematic here. So you notice two compressor lockout boards, a contactor, transformer, a relay, two more contactors, an ignition module, and capacitors. If we come over to this, look right down here, there's a legend. Compressor lockout one, CLO one, CLO two, contactor, transformer, relay, contactor, contactor, ignition cap, and then circuit breaker. So it does a really good job. And if you wanna know what IFC stands for, just go to right here, IFC, indoor fan contactor. OFC, you know, so 
I love this right here and it also helps you to know, so Y1 is gonna go to CLO1, Y2 is gonna go to CLO2. So all that we have to do to wire this unit back up is take this blue wire, put a connector on it, and go where this gray wire is. Boom, done. Then we'll be wired in for the compressor and power from the transfer, the thermostat's gonna go directly into the lockout board. And the lockout board just acts as a logic. If any of the pressure safeties open up, then the lockout board um, locks the compressor out and won't let it turn back on and short cycle or anything. While I'm dealing with the electrical, I'm gonna take some penetrating oil and put it on the shaft where I'm gonna be taking it off. Try not to get it in the bearings. Just let it sit on there so that way when it comes time for me to take the shaft off, it's a lot easier. Put a little bit back here too. Again, you wanna be careful not to get it into the bearings if you can. I mean, I guess I'm kind of doing it a little bit there. Yeah, so that's where we're at. Before I went too far, I uh, just very carefully isolated the low voltage wires, put a new transformer in there, and let it pull in to make sure that the motor worked. I'm getting a buzzing coming from the uh, contactor for the indoor blower motor, so we might be changing that too. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's definitely buzzing. It's not making good contact because you see how I push on one side and then when I push on the other, it works. So this is my indoor blower motor contactor and I want to show you guys something. Okay, no voltage drop. But when I first turned it on, it was making a buzzing sound and then I kind of pushed on it and the buzzing sound went away. Now, here's what I noticed. I believe that the poles inside that are dirty. So if we push on one side, my motor starts making a funny noise and let's check my voltage drop. Okay, we got voltage drop now. So this contactor is bad. When I push on it, it'll make contact, but when you push on it again, it doesn't make very good contact. So the contactor is pitted. So let's check this again. And now there's no voltage drop. But every time it pulls in and pulls out, it might make a bad connection. And that's why I believe it was buzzing when I first got there. But that's just a great representation of what can happen if you have a bad contact is that voltage drop. So I don't want to keep replicating it because I don't want to burn up my motor because we obviously were almost losing a phase basically. So, but that's that. All right, so we're going to start by trying to remove the pulley. Take the set screw out. Actually, that's the adjustment set screw. So we need to take it out over here on the back side. Try not to adjust the pulley because we're going to try to match the old one to the new one. Go ahead and take the set screw out all the way without losing it if you can. A little more penetrating oil on there. Cool. A little more in there. Cool. All right, and then uh, a couple different methods we can go about this. Easiest one is to try to pry it off if you can. I don't know if I can by simply putting a yep, put a, a wrench behind it and use leverage, and it slid right off. So easy peasy. And then let's go ahead and focus on this other one now. We're gonna follow, try to follow the same principle. This one will be a little bit easier because we can actually get to the key. need to get those T-handled Allen wrenches from my van. I have them, I just don't use them that often, so. Just get it loose enough to where the key can come out. Once the key can come out, we'll be able to get this guy off no problem. Now, we can go ahead and sand this up too. We might have to, but I might be able to cheat here. And we'll have to see right now. So what I'm gonna do is take my dikes or whatever you want to call these and I'm going to force the key out. See I'm grabbing and using leverage to pull the key out. Once we get the key out it makes life a lot easier. So sometimes we can get it out like this. Look at that. Just using the leverage. Now it's not going to come off because it's dirty so we're going to go ahead and sand it now. Try to cheat here.
I don't know if that's going to do the trick or not. Yep. No. Nope. Still need to sand it a little bit more. We'll have to get some sandpaper out. Take the sandpaper, get you a thin strip, and then just go to town. Make it long so that way you can get some leverage on it. You can actually spin the shaft with it. Do a new piece. Cool. Come off. There we go. Pull these off. All right, we're going to clean it up a little bit better. Make room for the new one. We'll clean the, uh, the motor shaft too. The drive pulley has a split taper because it's not a, uh, we find that a lot in the supply houses because they can stock a lot more pulleys if they use the split taper style. It's cool, I don't mind it. Okay. Split taper has um, the type of pulley. It's got like kind of a universal hub and then you put this split taper inside of it and it tightens it down. So you've got two holes right here with threads. Those are for taking the pulley off. So this will be fixed. You put the screws in there and you tighten them down evenly and it'll push the pulley off. And then the ones without the threads are for putting the pulley on and then the pulley has threads in it. And so we're gonna evenly tighten it once we get it centered. But what we need to do is go ahead and get our key put in. Now the key, I got a new key, so we should be able to put that in no problem. There we go. And we can kind of get an idea and look at it'll slide back and forth. We'll adjust it once we get the motor pulley put on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it. I'll check uh, lower speed when we're done, but I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it to the same length. I'm gonna kind of eyeball it right here. What I could have done is I could have uh, ran the motor to see how many RPMs it was turning, but at the same time this pulley was worn out, so it had been a little bit hard to see the actual RPM. So we'll make sure we check current draw too to make sure we're not over amping. That's about the same. Okay. This guy on here. Looks like we've got a little binding action going on, so we'll put a little lubricant on there. of a sand. See if that'll help. Get some of that grit off there. And then a little more lubricant. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy on now. wants to kind of be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Yes, I know should not hit because of the motor bearings, but it is what it is. I did what I did. So I had to put this panel on, which I hoped that I could take it off to be able to do this, but the crappy thing is, is that these dang carrier, if any of you guys have worked on these things, everything in this unit flexes. This unit right here flexes. This flexes, the motor flexes. So you can never get these pulleys lined up. I mean, you could try shimming things, but I've got a straight edge, but you can see there's a gap, and then come over here, there's a gap, but then it's tight. So straight there, straight there in the right corner, gap, gap. It's just silly. So we're just doing our best to make sure it's lined up as best as possible. Looks like I need to pull it out a little bit more. It's not gonna be perfect because these carriers just stink, man. So I tried to align it as best as possible. There's only so much you can do, but we got a nice new belt on there. I went ahead and vacuumed this out as best as possible. When I fire this unit up, I'm actually gonna put this panel right here because I want the dust. There's still gonna be dust floating around. I want it to blow this way. So 
and we'll fire it up real quick, bump start the motor, and then uh, finish going through the unit. This is the panel that I'm talking about. If you wanted to make the unit a side shot, you'd screw that panel down. But I put it there, even when I test heat exchangers too, or uh, yeah, when I burn off a heat exchanger at the beginning of the season, throw that panel right there, fire it up so all the nasty stuff blows out. So the best I can do is adjusting it to ever so slightly positive. It's teetering between zero and uh, positive 0 0.01 inches of water column. That's about as close as I can get it. Now remember something, this is not perfect. Ideally, I need to fix my makeup air unit, but my makeup air unit, when I tighten the belt too tight, the bearing starts making a clicking noise. So we need to replace the motor. So what's gonna happen is when I replace the motor, I'll put new pulleys on this and we'll get more air from this makeup air unit and be able to throttle down the AC units. Right now it's winter time. I had to open all the AC units substantially to make up for what the makeup air is losing. So this is just a temporary fix until we can submit a quote to get the makeup air running. But now being that it's winter time, we won't have the complaints of the guests being cold because cold air is rushing in the front doors when they open them. All right, again, I am not a certified air balance person. I was just kind of winging it, doing the best that I could. There's lots of things like adjusting the minimum outside air positions of the air conditioning units, you know, that obviously I can't leave that way. But once I go back and fix the makeup air unit, then we can dial everything back in. But I needed to get the customer operational. I needed to get them to where their dining room wasn't freezing from that cold air that was blasting in the building, okay? There's lots of interesting little tips I dropped inside of here. One of the biggest things is, is get yourself one of these pulley gauges, okay? It really does help, especially for the newer guys that you know can't really feel or don't understand exactly what to look for when you're looking at a worn out pulley. I can see most of them with my eyeballs, but it's always good to have that tool too, just to kind of feel it. Um, that one was a severely bad worn out pulley. Usually you can catch them with the gauge before the belts start getting stuck in there. Okay. But also too, you know, belts don't just break. You look at how a belt is broken and it really tells you a lot. If you start to notice that, you know, the, the sidewalls worn out down to where you get to the, the, the fibers that are inside the belt, Something's wrong there. You know, if a belt just snaps, you know, that's something's wrong there too. If you see multiple cracks all around, then that's, you know, just a worn out belt. But I mean, you know, there's all kinds of different symptoms and signs that will tell you a lot about what's going on within the system. Okay. Um, as far as the air balance goes, you know, uh, what I was doing was uh, just shutting the building, leaving all the doors shut, putting my manometer in the roof hatch, and then watching the building pressurize and depressurize, okay? Every time someone opened a door, I kind of got a baseline, and then I adjusted and fixed things until I got it dialed in a little bit better. Understand something, too, that I opened up the outside air dampers on those ACs and essentially shut down the return air, so we're not bringing as much air from in the building up back up into the AC and re recooling it, we're bringing outside air in and uh, um, the air that's being blown in through the outside air dampers is getting sucked out through the exhaust fans. That's not an ideal situation, okay? Obviously the heaters are gonna be running a little bit more because the building temperature is gonna be a little bit cooler. In the summertime, if we left it like that, they would be bringing 110, 115 degree air because that's what we get in that city and the air conditioners wouldn't be able to keep up. So. Um, what I did is a temporary fix, but it won't work necessarily in a really, really cold climate and it won't work in a really, really hot climate. Right now we have a moderate winter here in California. Our temperatures are in the fifties. Okay. At nighttime, it might drop into the mid forties and that's it. And then, you know, during the day it's fifties and sixties. So we can kind of handle adjusting those outside air dampers temporarily. Okay. Um, I don't think there's really too much more that I really talked about. I pointed out that electrical short on the carrier units. Those things are really common that they short out on the economizers. So I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. I do want to point out that I am currently getting ready to start up a new YouTube channel. I've mentioned it in the last couple of videos. It's called HVACR Tools. It's where I'm going to be reviewing HVACR tools, right? Um, I am going to put a link down in the show notes. It'll be one of the first line items. Uh, please go over and subscribe to the channel. I don't have any videos on there yet, but I will very soon. I'm working on some right now. I'm working on a thermal imaging video with a couple different thermal imaging cameras. Um, I've been uh, testing out a couple different pairs of uh, the most popular pants that I'm going to show what, what I like about them and what I don't like. 
Um, and some other cool stuff coming soon that I really can't talk about yet, but there'll be some other cool videos. Um, and I'll try to post regularly on that channel too. So please give me a subscription on that one. I'd really appreciate it. Um, Keep in mind that I do live streams uh, Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific time, work permitting. So long as I can get off work in time, I do live streams where I answer all the questions that you guys send me in the comments. I address mistakes that I made, all that good stuff, okay? So come check out my live streams too. And other than that, guys, we will catch you guys on the next one, okay?